If you are done eating, please come on up and grab a seat. We're going to enter a time of worship. Who wants to come up and pray us into worship? Okay, I got you. <laughs> All right, folks in the back, we're going to go ahead and take seats, and Nate's going to do, uh, do a little worship for us. So let me just pray us into that. Father, I just thank you uh, for your continued love and mercy. Lord, that you continue to bless us in ways that we don't even understand. Uh, Lord, I pray that uh, we're able to pour our hearts out to you here, that we do more than sing a song, but Lord, that we truly extend our praise to you for all that you are to us, for us, and with us. <clears throat> in Jesus' name, amen. Shouting, crucified. 
All right, praise the Lord. Thank you, Nate. Well, welcome everybody and those that are joining us online. Uh, you are at Recovery Church Treasure Coast. I first want to say happy Veterans Day to all our veterans and uh, a quick thank you to anyone who has served. Um, remind you that the coffee shop that you, uh, many of you walked in through, we have a rotation of charities that supports 100% of the proceeds support local charities uh, for this month. It's four kids. If you're not familiar with four kids, they take care of foster children all, all the way. The tr four kids Treasure Coast has actually expanded well beyond the Treasure Coast. They, they help families or north of Orlando and down. It's, it's amazing what they do, uh, and we want to support that as much as possible. Um, we, just so you know, last Monday of the month is testimony night, and starting this month, we're going to have the Jacobsons here doing worship music every testimony night. If you don't know Stephanie and her brother, um, you'll, you'll appreciate their style of worship. It'll be, uh, it'll be a, a pleasure. We, we love having Nate here, but I also promised him when he first started coming back that we wouldn't make him uh, have to get up there every night. It's on his desire. Uh, when he called, when he texts me and says, can I do it tonight? I said, yeah. If not, then we, we will always do a backup plan. But so we're, we know at least one night a month that he'll have off. So, But we appreciate you, Nate. We really do. Uh, we want to remind you that Recovery Church is a bridge between the 12-step rooms and the traditional church. And so we want to bring the two together. The 12 steps started squarely in the scriptures, and that's where they belong. And uh, in many places, that's been lost. And so we end up having to go into the rooms and do a bit of apologetics for the scriptures and the church. But at the same time, we end up in the church having to do apologetics for the 12 steps because people don't realize they're truly from the scriptures because they've been misrepresented so much. So we want to be a bridge between the two. Uh, so don't forget to go into the rooms and carry the light that you have uh, because there are people there that don't know Jesus and need to know where, what the real scriptural truth is to it. Thank you, Danny. He's, he's up there holding up the bucket that I always forget about. So um, we do pass around a bucket. We're all volunteers, but it does help pay for the food. Uh, the Bibles we give away, the crosses, the technology, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we appreciate whatever you can do there. Uh, and as Wade and I were talking, it's our duty to, to make disciples of people. And part of that is teaching you the value of giving. Um, and and we, we, we do a lot of that here. Everything you give to us, a percentage of that goes both to this church that hosts us and to the Recovery Church movement and then to needs in the community uh, as we're able. Don't forget to turn off your phones. I just turned mine off because it went up here to re remind me. Uh, we do have to put the tables back and clean up and stuff. So tonight afterwards, the women are going to meet out in the uh, coffee shop and the men will meet in here. Just kind of when we take that break, be respectful of that and try and move quickly so that those that are ready to start talking are able to do so without interference. Um, be considering and be prayerful and give me your name and number if you want to do it tonight. I can start making a list. We are going to help serve Thanksgiving uh, off of Orange Avenue. So we're going to work with Mustard Seed. So off of Orange and 9th Street on Thanksgiving morning, we start at 10 a.m. And we probably wrap up cleanup around 12, 30, 1 o'clock. You don't have to be there for all of it, but we really do appreciate it, particularly those that can stay and clean up. So Chef Matt, who has helped, he actually made the wings that we had tonight. And he's made other food that we've appreciated at different times. Um, we expect to serve between two and a half and 3,000 people. So we need hands. We need help. If you want to be a part of that, I'm going to start a sign-up sheet tonight. And we'd love to have you out there doing that. Uh, another holiday event coming up is the uh, Monday the 23rd of December. We will not be meeting here. Well, we are, but we're not going to be doing Recovery Church. What is happening instead is there's four worship sessions for Christmas Eve Eve. So we have a 4 o'clock, a 5.30, and a 7 o'clock. Uh, 4 o'clock, 5.30, and 7 o'clock on Christmas Eve Eve, the 23rd. So our regular recovery church will not meet that night because we're doing an all-night three sessions of, of Christmas worship. So please join us for that, but go online to wearediscovery.com and reserve which of those services if all of them even, you plan to be at because they do pack out and it does run out of space and they kind of gauge how to do seating based on that reservation. Here, 
It is. It's beautiful. It's nice. So, and, it, and it's wonderfully done because it is on Eve Eve, so it doesn't interfere with a lot of other stuff that people are typically doing. We will still meet at the end of December because that is uh, New Year's Eve Eve. So we will actually meet and have our testimony night here on the 30th of December. But those are upcoming holidays and things to take note of. Don't forget, police your cigarettes. If you're a smoker, please stop. We want to keep you alive. But if you do smoke, make sure that your cigarette butts don't land out there. We want to leave this place nice. Um, that is what I've got, except I want to invite my friend Jason up. He's going to share a little bit on uh, his, some of his take on the 11th step. And uh, just so it, it, it's called a conscious contact with God. Come on up. Give Jason a hand. Hello? Is that, is that working okay? Oh, it's still working? Okay. All right. Hey, everyone. How you doing? Uh, thanks to uh, Wade. Oh, there you are. <laughs> right in front of me. Thanks to Wade, Lyle. Appreciate it. This opportunity. Um, step 11 is a great, great step. So I'm glad to be here. Thank you all. Um, and my name is Jason. I am an addict and an alcoholic saved by the grace of God. Uh, yeah, I just seem to like those words, a conscious contact with God. I don't know, I just thought that's cool, so, you know, from the step, of course, but um, step 11, sought through prayer. Uh, actually, let me just say real quick, um, step 11, uh, you boil it down, it's all about just becoming more like Christ. That's the goal, just become more like Christ. That's the lesson, all right. <laughs> No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. You're actually in for a long haul, haul so buckle up. Uh, I love Step 11. It's, I mean, they're all so good, but it's got to be one of my favorites for sure. Because uh, it's just, you know, deep being in a relationship with God. It's just connecting more with God. It's what it's all about, right? So, um, yeah, it, it was hard. I saw a while beforehand. I had to delete some stuff because it's too long. But uh, hopefully, hopefully you guys can pay attention to the whole thing because it, it's good. It's good. Uh, so th sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. And what I basically just did for this, um, I just broke it down um, in mainly my own stuff that I've just obviously heard throughout the years by using AA and sober covering the Bible as well. But a lot of it's just from stuff I've learned through the years that hopefully it can benefit you as well because it's benefited me for sure because you know, I still have the knowledge. But um, let's just go quick to the basics, just the basics. So prayer and meditation, right? Prayer, talking to God, right? Meditation, listening to God. You know, I like to keep it simple. I like to keep it simple. And um, that's what I was taught, prayer and meditation is, and so I'm still rolling with that, prayer. Talking to God, meditation, listening to God. Conscious contact. Well, the actual definition of that in the dictionary, or some dictionary, is aware and responding. So conscious contact's like, what does that even mean? Like, you know, I was like, what does that even mean? So I just looked it up. Aware and responding. It's a lot easier to understand. You just use those simple words. Uh, praying only for knowledge of his will for us. That part, the basic of that is we're not praying to get God to do what we want. We're praying to truly get to know our Lord and Savior. We're depending, we're sorry, we're deepening our relationship with God through knowledge and understanding of his will. Power to carry that out, and out is of course God's will. Trusting God to give you strength and courage. So the power to carry that out Basic breakdown, trust in God, give you courage and strength. And through his Holy Spirit to do what God wants you to do. Just do what God wants you to do. So that was the, um, the basic breakdowns. So now we're going to take it just a uh, step further. Excuse me. 
been talking a lot, so. <laughs> um, so we'll go back, take it a step further. Um, I just want to say that straight up prayer, and that's what we're going with first, of course, because we're going back to the top. It's just so vital. It's just so vital. Um, and so prayer, this part of the lesson probably is the longest. Um, so take heart. The other parts aren't as long. <laughs> because prayer is so vital. It's just so vital. And it's vital, necessary, important, whatever, fill in the blank. Not just for recovery, but for living a life with God. You know what I mean? So you got to have it. You need it. It's 100%. It's a must. So talking to God, right? Prayer, talking to God. Um, looking at Celebrate Recovery uh, biblical principles, they got Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Don't just read the word. Let the word read you. Amen. My former pastor... Uh, Pastor Roger Ball, maybe some of you know him, a uh, great man, rest in peace. Um, he would say that to me all the time. And I'll tell you what, in early recovery, shot out as can be, I didn't know what the heck he was talking about. <laughs> but as I grew with the Lord and grew in my recovery, I get it. And maybe some of you don't get that tonight. Well, I encourage you to dive deep. Dive deep in the word, dive deep into his spirit, and one day you will understand it too. Don't just let the word, sorry, don't just read the word let the word read you. Don't just read the word. Allow it to be active in your life. You can read it all day long. If you don't apply it, what's it good for? So incorporating scripture into our prayers, I believe, is also vital. Incorporating scripture into our prayers. The... Um, I'm sorry, the Colossians 3.16, that was the biblical comparison of Celebrate Recovery. Celebrate Recovery Step 11 principle is reserve a daily time with God for self-examination, Bible readings, and prayer in order to know God and his will for my life and to gain the power to follow his will. Notice in the principle it says to know his will for my life, right? It makes it more personal there. Some people think, and I have actually heard this before, you should only pray for others and not yourself. I believe that is silly and straight up wrong. Now, um, obviously we pray for others, but you can pray for yourself too. Um, remember, though, we're not praying for our wants and our needs and to get God to do what we want to do or those foxhole prayers, as they're called, um, because that would be outside of God's will, right? And, and that is wrong. We're praying, so for instance, I'm not praying to win the lottery or own a Ferrari or maybe praying I don't get caught in a lie. A lie is a sin, and now I'm praying not to get caught in this. The answer to that is obviously to be honest, right? Working biblical principles into my life. So I'm not praying not to get caught in a lie. I'm praying for a Ferrari, whatever, whatever. This is also wrong. However, absolutely pray for yourself. Pray to defeat sin. Pray to be a reflection of Christ. Pray for the fruit, the fruit of the Spirit to grow in your life. So when you pray for yourself, you got to pray according to God's will. When you incorporate scripture into your prayers for yourself, rest assured you're most certainly praying according to his will. And that's why praying, incorporating scriptures into your prayers can be so amazing. Because then, without a shadow of doubt, you're praying within his will because it's God's word. So when we pray for ourselves, even without the scripture... Just do so with a heart that is aligned with God's spirit. Do it with the right motives and be sincere. My personal experience and testimony about talking with God. Okay, so 
maybe a week, maybe two in early re uh, into rehab. Um, so maybe a week, maybe two sober. After 15 years plus of drug use and alcohol, uh, a guy came in, an alumni of the center, shared his experience, strength, and hope, and then went around the room, and he looked at me square in the eyes and said, what are you going to do different? What are you going to do different? And at that moment in time, I only accepted the fact that I was an addict. I knew I had a problem with these hard drugs, I need to put these down, get my life together, et cetera, et cetera. But I had no desire nor thought that there was anything wrong with drinking or smoking pot. And when he said, what are you going to do different? Man, something so simple just hit me like a ton of bricks. I'm an alcoholic <laughs> and an addict. And I cannot touch any kind of substance, uh, including alcohol, along with everything else. So what I was going to do different was, I was the first time in my life I decided, I'm just going to put it all down putting it all down. Um, and I also said to myself, because I tried to quit so many times on my own, and it never worked. I failed every time. So this time in rehab, I said, I'm going to accept the help that's being offered. You know, I'm going to have an open mind. I'm going to have the help of others. And at that time, I was like, I guess God, because uh, I was kind of on the fence at first. Um, but obviously, I'm sold out now. <laughs> But uh, I went home that night, and this is before I ever had a sponsor, before I ever did a step three. Um, really didn't know anything about recovery, or God, really. Um, I knew a little bit from my childhood, but not much. And I just got down on my knees um, in one of the apartments at that rehab, and I got down on my knees, and I said, God, if you exist, um, I need your help because I want to live a life that is free from drugs and alcohol. And I have no clue how to do that. And so I'm going to need your help. Please help me. And I tell you what, the next morning, something started clicking. It just started clicking after that prayer. It really did. It started uh, clicking. So that's proof right there of the power of prayer. And... You don't have to have scripture. It can just be a prayer from the heart and just being honest with God. It started clicking after that. And after that, every day, I just woke up and said, God, please give me wisdom, understanding, and knowledge of who you are, your will, your goodness. And I tell you what, he just took off those blinders, which I'll talk about a little bit later, but um, took off those blinders and just seeing signs and his work just everywhere I went. It was amazing. Um, so then now, these days, um, that's, that's where I came from. Uh, I, I pray in the morning. I pray at night. I pray throughout the day, just small prayers such as, Thy will be done. You know, so a little bit more devotional, Bible reading, um, and prayer time at night. Uh, definitely in the morning as well, but my mornings can be very, very busy. So I would say my Bible reading time and prayer time is at night. But I do pray in the morning, every single morning. I try before my feet even hit the ground. I'm not perfect at that, but I most certainly pray every morning and night and, and little prayers throughout the day as well. Every time I pray, I'm getting closer to God. Every time I pray, I'm getting a little bit closer to God. Prayer is for us. God made prayer for us. Prayer is how we allow God to come into our lives and create a deeper, more meaningful relationship with him. That's how it gets done. Prayer, prayer and meditation. That's how we create a deeper, more meaningful relationship with him. You know, and I say stick with the basics, you know, keep it simple. If you're looking to deepen your faith in God, start here tonight with prayer and meditation. You know what I mean? I pray for myself. I pray for family, friends. I pray for our nation. I pray for the political powers that be. Whether I agree with them or not, it doesn't matter. I pray for them because they are in office and ahead of our nation. I pray for the authority over my life, my boss, my coworkers, my place of business. Um, I pray for random people. I see an ambulance go by or fire truck. I start praying for wherever that, that uh, vehicle is heading. To, uh, you know, I see a car accident. You know, I pray for, for that. I cry driving the road. Random people all the time. Um, or God starts tugging on your heart 
to, to pray for a random person. And you get this all as anxiety and uncomfortability. And you're like, ah, I don't want to do that. And God's like, you got to do it. And I'm like, oh, now I got to obey God. And <laughs> it's not that fun. But surely every time I, I obey and go pray for that random person, um, I get blessed. I get blessed. It's so worth it. You know, there's little God moments in life. So I literally, my point is here, I literally pray about everything and everyone. I mean, pretty much. You know what I mean? Um, but the number one thing recovery has taught me about prayer is change of perspective. And you can throw in attitude as well. Change of perspective and attitude. Um, when I'm in a hard situation or I'm mad at my wife or a friend or a family member, whatever, I do my best if I'm able to first to just straight up remove myself from the situation. Uh, that's what's best for me because if I don't, um, unfortunately, my emotions will take over. You know what I mean? And I don't want that, obviously. I want to respond in faith, not emotions. So I try to remove myself from the situation. That's sometimes not always possible, but that's my go-to. But then once I remove myself, um, I pray to God. And I just, I just start talking to God. And what he does most of the time, immediately, but not always, but most of the time, he changes my perspective, changes my attitude to align with his. He aligns my attitude and my perspective with his when I start praying. And so he helps me to look inward and to look at my role in the situation to stop blaming others. So I'm all pissed off about this situation of this person. I remove myself. I start praying. At first, my will, Jason's will, is like, ah, they did this, and that made me mad, or this happened, and I'm uh, angry or frustrated, whatever it is. But then I start praying. It just melts. It just goes away. And I'm like, well, I'm in control of my actions and emotions and words. Yeah, they did that. I'm not excusing that, or that happened. That, that, you know, this unfortunate thing, whatever. I'm not excusing that, but... God does give us the power to how we respond, how we respond. And so I stop blaming others and say, well, you did this, and this is why I'm mad. But I look at my role of the situation and say, well, you know, I did play a part here. I did this, or whatever the case may be. So God 100% changes my perspective, changes my attitude. And that's probably the number one thing in recovery that um, God has done with me through prayer in that's, you know, a weekly basis. Maybe some hard weeks every day. <laughs> Other weeks are good, though, and cruise on by. But some weeks, whoo, man, I don't know. Just, um, they come in threes, I guess. Anyways, uh, prayer or talking to God, it's just an essential part of recovery. It's just so essential. Uh, the 12 and 12 of AA says, praying is the raising of the heart and mind to God. I like that. Uh, for those that have not developed a solid prayer life, here are a few suggestions. In the morning, just pray for God to help you. And at night, thank God. That's where I started. That's what I was taught uh, through AA uh, in the very beginning. Just pray in the morning for him to help you. And at night, thank him. In specific situations where we do not know God's will, simply pray, thy will be done. Simplest, but such a powerful prayer. Thy will be done. Because now you're just inviting God into your life for his will to be done and nothing else. Or take that specific situation and just surrender it to God, right? Put the situation in God's hands. We're always trying to do things our way. Uh, well, I'm always trying to do things my way. And that always just gets me in trouble. It never ends well. My, Jason's way is not good. Um, when I take the situation, person, place, whatever it is, place it in God's hands, it's way better off. Just simply give it to God. Just give it to God. Practice reading prayers, right? If you haven't developed a, a prayer life on your own yet, just take prayers that are already written. Uh, I'm a big fan of step three and seven of AA. Uh, early on sponsor gave me a little card. Step three on the front, step seven on the back prayers. And I read those every day, every day. Um, pray prayers that are in the Bible. There's a lot of prayers in the Bible. Obviously, one of the most popular ones is the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer. You could start there. Just say, say the Lord's Prayer. 
Um, so there's a good few suggestions, uh, and there, there's a lot of prayers in the Bible, too. You don't have to stop there. I'm just saying a good place to start if you're new to this thing. You can use an acronym. Um, there's a lot out there, too. Uh, I'm a fan of pray because it's simple. I like to keep it simple, as I said. Praise, repent, ask, yield. Use the acronym pray and use that in your prayer life. Praise, repent, ask, yield. No matter where you start or how you do it, my suggestion, just pray. Just pray. Can't go wrong. Uh, it is one of the greatest tools of recovery. Pray out of honesty, the right motive. Pray from the heart. Just talk to God as you talk to a close friend. That's it. Just have a conversation with him. Just, um, just talk to him like a friend. Jesus said, if we ask, we will receive. If we seek, we will find. If we knock, the door will open. This promise isn't a blank check for any and all prayers, though. Uh, God doesn't answer all our prayers, or sometimes it's no or not yet. The reason being is that Jesus, sorry, Jesus often said to do this or pray in my name. When Jesus said this, by saying, you're praying in my name, Jesus speaking, of course, um, he's saying, you're doing so according to my will and my heart. That's what in Jesus' name means, that you're praying within, according to the will and the heart of Christ. That's what we're doing when we pray in Jesus' name. So once again, when we pray, we should be doing so according to the will and the heart of Jesus. And if it is his will, we will receive, we will find, and the door most certainly will be open. If you're not getting an answer prayer, what do you do if you don't get an answered prayer? Well, check your heart, check your motives, check your heart. Do you have unconfessed sin? Do you need to forgive someone? Are you praying in faith and obedience? to God's word and spirit. If your heart is well and your motives are good, but still your prayer goes unanswered, my uh, encouragement is keep being persistent and keep seeking, keep knocking, and be patient, be patient. You can go back to the Bible that God gave someone a promise and that promise didn't come true for a long time, so... Lots of times we gotta wait for that prayer to get answered. So be patient, be persistent. Persistent. If your, your heart is well and your motives are clear and good, keep going, keep praying. All right, that wraps it up for prayer. Moving into meditation or listening to God. Obviously, it's hard to separate the two, prayer and meditation, because uh, they go hand in hand. But uh, the last section, obviously, is centering on talking to God. This is gonna do its best to center on listening to God. Uh, once again, scripture. Start a prayer with incorporating scripture into our prayer life. Scripture. It's, it's, it's vital. I cannot be more clear when it comes to prayer and meditation. Scripture is very important. Sometimes our prayers are unanswered because God's already spoken. God already spoke. It's right there in his word. And he may not say it again because his encouragement for you, if he has already spoken in the word, um, is to get into the word. So he doesn't want to answer your prayer because then that's going to stop you from going to read his word. At least this is, it is for me. Lots of times I'm like, okay, let me get into the word and see what it says. And I'm like, oh, bam, wow, it's right there. You know what I mean? So lots of times God doesn't answer that prayer because he's trying to get you into his word. The Bible is one of the most important ways God speaks to us. It's not the only, but it's one of the most important. So read God's word. Read the Bible. Uh, with that being said, that obviously scripture is important. There are many forms of meditation. Everyone is different. Uh, we connect with God differently. We're all individuals. We connect with God differently. It doesn't have to be this formal way of meditation. Um, it can be here just a few uh, that I came up with literally on the top of my head. Uh, the beach, the ocean. People go to the beach and just close their eyes and listen to the sound of the waves coming in, Right? and they're connecting with God, right? Hobbies, I've seen guys, they go uh, fishing, kayaking, riding a bike. Uh, I had this one guy, went out fishing, and he just casts his line and just closes his eyes, 
and just starts meditating, you know, whatever he does, focuses on his breathing, just, li- just says, God, speak to me, and listens, quiet his mind. So hobbies, hobbies is a way to connect with God. Uh, simply taking a walk, simply taking a walk. Um, you can ride a bike. Uh, my brother once told me, he rode his bike, and he was fresh off out of um, detox and stuff and newly sober at the time. And he said he drove his bike down the road going pretty fast, and the wind was hitting his face, and he closed his eyes and just felt that wind on his face. And he was literally just like, thank you, God. I'm alive. Thank you, God. This wind on my face. Like, he was, just, he was opening up his, his chance. He was opening himself up to the Lord, you know? Simply riding a bike, going on a walk. I mentioned going on a walk, right? Walk through the forest. Nature. Nature. Sorry, I forgot to say that. Nature. The forest, the birds, animals, insects, flowers, plants. God's creations, right? God's creations. The sun or the moon and the stars. I'm a big fan of the stars. Um, The sun is hot. (laughs) But the moon and the stars, I'm a big fan of that one. I love going out in a dark, dark area and looking up at the stars and just opening myself up to God. It is, it just makes you realize how small you really are and you're like, wow, God is so big. <laughs> um, he created that, man. It's cra- he placed the stars in their place. It's crazy. So just appreciate God's creation or creations. Open your mind. Clear your thoughts and just ask him to speak to you. Quiet time or God time. Um, so on a, spirit, a, ga- a spiritual gathering for men in recovery that I go on every six months, which is actually coming up at the end of this month, November 30th, very excited. It's just one day. You spend like one night, you're there for a day and a half, but it's an amazing time to refocus and um, recenter yourself in God. And they have this hour time. Sometimes they do it two, one hour, one hour separately, but sometimes just one hour. And it's my favorite time every time is God time. We call it God time, which is literally you just go to a secluded place on this beautiful, gorgeous property. Um, You get alone with God. You just ask God, quiet your mind, still your thoughts, right? And just ask God to speak to you. And every single time, he just starts speaking to me. And so uh, I also did it once in a closet. Some people go in their closet and just turned off the lights And that was powerful. That was powerful. I should do that probably more often. I try to have God time every day, but it's it's tough when you're um, living a busy life. But I do I do uh, decent. Um, I knew another guy who lit a candle in a dark room, and he would just stare and focus at that candle, and he would just keep his eyes on that candle. And eventually, things around him kind of just become blur, right? And like he just is on that candle, and he's just like, God, speak to me. You know what I mean? God, speak to me. And he said, boom, just out of nowhere. Hits him like a ton of bricks. God just starts speaking though. I thought that was a cool idea. Um, uh, meditating with a candle. But it's just quiet time, right? Just getting alone with God. That's the point here. People breathing deeply, focusing on your breathing. Um, that's a big one. The, that, that was me when I, the first time I ever meditated, I'll never forget, in er, early in rehab too, a friend that came up to me and I you know, wasn't into this stuff yet or whatever. Um, I probably had wrong motives. <laughs> but like I said, after that day, things did start clicking and down the road, they start clicking more and more. But he said to me, you know, um, Jason, you need to go meditate because uh, they called me squirrel back in rehab. Uh, <laughs> and I was high strung, high blood pressure, coming off a lot of hard drugs. And so I was just whacked out of my mind. Uh, still am a little bit. <laughs> But anyways, my friend says, Jason, you need to go meditate. And I was like, get out of my face, dude. You know what I mean? But I went home that night. That is what I told him. But every time people try to give me a suggestion, my, back then, my uh, defenses would immediately go up, right? But then the Holy Spirit would start to convict me. So that night, as I went to bed, I said, you know, I'm going to try this meditation thing. And with no suggestions, no lesson, no sponsor, whatever, whatever, um, I just started to focus on my breathing and breathing deep and just like... And just did that for a while. And really, I tell you what, it did. It centered me. It relaxed me. It centered me. I probably had one of the best sleeps I ever had that night in a very long time. Uh, Worship music. I'm a big fan of that one. I tell you what, sometimes I'll get in my car and I'll hear some 
worship song that I'm a really big fan of, man, it'll just capture my heart. And I just start weeping. You know, it just comes over me like hardcore. And I am just weeping. And <laughs> if someone could see me in the window, just like crying out to God, you know, like out loud. I'm like, Lord, thank you. I love you, God. You know, and like, I mean, and just literally tears coming out. You know what I mean? So worship music is a big one for me, you know? Get, get into the uh, worship music. It can really, really turn your heart towards him. You know what I mean? That's a big one. Med that's a form of meditation. As you can see, meditation comes in many different forms. I encourage you to find what works for you. You gotta find what works for you. Everybody's different. Find what works for you. The 12 and 12 of AA describes meditation as placing ourselves in a mood in which we can focus undisturbed. It describes meditation of becoming a channel of God's grace, right? So we just, that's the goal there. We want to become a channel of God's grace. We want to be in a mood in which we're focused and undisturbed. Meditation is placing ourselves in the realm of the Lord's spirit. Meditation can always be further, sorry, meditation can always be further developed and it has no boundaries. So it can go most anywhere, excuse me. The point of meditation is to align ourselves with God's grace, wisdom, and love. And one of the first fruits of it is emotional balance. And that was, that was me that night. First fruit of that meditation uh, practice with breathing deeply in my bedroom that night, emotional balance came over me for sure. Um, the next morning, maybe not so much, but definitely probably better off. Like I said, I had a good night's sleep. My emotions definitely were more balanced than they were. I don't know if fully balanced, but more than they were. Uh, one of the first fruits, emotional balance. We become in harmony with God's spirit by just quieting our thoughts, clearing our mind, and ridding ourselves of distractions so we can hear what God has to say. There's a lot of distractions. Yeah. And it's sometimes here, because God's always speaking. God is always speaking. Are you listening? That's the, the matter here. Are we listening? Did you know early manuscripts like the Old Testament, such as the Psalms, is a very good example, is known as Jewish meditational literature. What does this mean? I learned this a long time ago and it stuck with me. So the, the Jewish culture would walk around and basically just mumble under their breath throughout the day, scripture. Um, they would literally just go throughout their journey. They would like, you know, take a verse or whatever, you know, a uh, passage, and they would just mumble it to themselves uh, throughout the day. And that way, throughout their day, it would be easier to apply it. So their focus was like all day on this verse. And so when things would come up, boom, the verse or passage, whatever, they're mumbling under their breath throughout the day, it's on the forefront of their mind. And so, bam, it was easy to apply it. You know what I mean? Um, Jewish meditational literature, really cool. I really like that idea. Uh, that's a tough one to do, but you could go for it. But that's, that's what they did. It's pretty cool. So once again, don't just read the word. Allow the word to read you. Meditate on it. Meditate on it. Let it really soak into your mind and heart. Here are some biblical refer references from the Old and New Testament that outline this. Joshua 1.8. Keep this book of law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then your will, sorry, then you will be prosperous and successful. Psalm 145, verse 5. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. Hebrews 3, 1. Therefore, holy brothers and sisters who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus, right? Fix your thoughts, right? Meditation. On Jesus, whom we acknowledge as our apostle and high priest. Romans 8, 5 through 7. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desire, desires. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set 
set on what the spirit desires. Um, I could skip some. I still have a lot. It's way too long. I should have deleted more. Let's see. I can, I can skip a lot of parts. Don't worry. Um, skipping. Skipping. Uh, I'll just say this really quick uh, and not go into the breakdown, but um, gratitude, being grateful, form of meditation, simply go into a meeting, form of meditation. We do prayer there. We have a moment of silence there. You hear someone share, and it'll really hit you in a profound way, and you kind of take it throughout your day thinking about it. That's meditation. Uh, many of us hear uh, from God through recovery meetings. I, I did that, sorry. Uh, God uses people to speak to us all the time. Uh, so I encourage everyone tonight to find the form of meditation or meditations that work for you. If you're looking to get started, go to a secluded place with no distractions and ask God to quiet your mind and help you be still, not your physical body, but to be still in your thoughts and just ask God to speak to you. Uh, let's see. All right. Going to conscious contact. Obviously, we've gone over prayer and meditation, but let's take a step further. Just be intentional, right? Conscious contact. Ask God to remove those blinders and be more aware of his works and presence. When you pray this, you will start to see signs all over the place and have God moments all the time, just like happened to me. Uh, once again, that's my experience. So you're just going deeper, right? Conscious contact. Just go deeper with God. Add five more minutes to your prayer life. Add five more minutes to your Bible reading. Listen to more worship music, less secular music. Put down the novel and the self-help books and pick up spiritual and recovery literature. Practice spiritual and biblical principles in your life. We're not perfect, but the goal is to be more like Christ. And this takes practice. And a lot of it. Submit yourself to the Lord and yield to his calling and commands. Conscious contact. I'll skip all this. I don't know how I wrote so much, dude. It's crazy. <laughs> I tried to tell you it was long. I was like, I got to delete some stuff, dude. Do you have a pen? Um, just get to know God, right? It's pretty simple. Don't complicate it. People want to complicate it. What's God's will? What is, what is will in general? Uh, this, is, this is, we're at the part, sorry, praying only for the knowledge of his will. So I'm almost there. Um, my will is simply my choices, my decisions, and my actions. And God's will is reflected in his character. We can turn to Jesus. That's one of the most simplest ways to know God's will is because Jesus is the human form of God. And look at how he interacted and communicated with people. Look how Jesus treated and loved others. Look at how he held people accountable and never co-signed on sin. Jesus is only the sinless human being. He is our example. He is the goal. People always want to complicate it with uh, the will for their lives. I'll tell you right now, God's will for your life. It is really simple. Just live a life that glorifies God. That's it. That's it. Just live a life that honors Christ. And we'll wrap up with the last one. Wrap it up real quick? Okay, okay. I'm trying to find it because I'm skipping around now to the... Uh, Okay, let's see. Okay, finally breaking down step 11 in a deeper way comes the power to carry it out. Simple, so this will be quick, but I do have one reading, and it's quick. Well, yeah, keep going. Power to carry that out. Power to carry that out. Uh, thank you for going through it with me. I appreciate it. I, I hope you all got blessed. If not, I surely did, because this was a lot of research, and it was great. Power to carry it out, it's simple. If we've truly and honestly surrendered our lives to Christ, we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That's where the power comes from, right? And step one, we were powerless, and our lives were unmanageable. But by step 11, we have the power. It's through the Holy Spirit. It's through God. I don't have the power. God's got the power, but his power indwells within us. And I just want to say that I am an addict, I can't pick up a substance or alcohol or anything because if I do, I will immediately become powerless again and my life will become unmanageable. So don't twist my words. But if I'm staying sober, following Christ, working a program of action, working biblical principles into my life, we most certainly have power through God, God's grace and his Holy Spirit. I want to finish it with 
It's step 11 prayer, prayer of St. Francis. Okay. Do you want to read it? No, I want you to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is the step 11 prayer, um, which is known as prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me a channel of thy peace, that where there is hatred, I may bring love. That where there is wrong, I may bring the spirit of forgiveness. That where there is discord, I may bring harmony. That where there is error, I may bring truth. That where there is doubt, I bring faith. That where there is despair, I may bring hope. That where there are shadows, I bring light. That where there is sadness, I may bring joy. Lord, grant that I may seek rather to comfort than to be comforted. To understand than to be understood. To love than to be loved. For it is by self-forgetting that one finds. It is by forgiving that one is forgiven. It is by dying that one awakens to eternal life. Yes. Amen. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. Here's your pen. Thank you. All right, well, th thank you, Jason, for obviously putting a lot of work into that. Do you see how many pages he flipped by that we didn't hear? And that was after he borrowed a pen to scratch out a bunch. So there's a, there's a lot. I think you need to start like a four-week uh, Step 11 workshop. Um, so <laughs> We're going to take a, a quick break here. But before we do, a few things have to happen. One is um, I forgot to mention in the beginning, I always share the um, principal and the, uh, uh, of both the AA and then of the uh, Recovery Church. Principle uh, 11 is awareness of spirituality, and then the, the value for recovery church, the 11th value, is discipleship and sponsorship. So if you're not being discipled or sponsored, if you're not sponsoring or discipling, let's talk about that. We, we want to be making disciples of Christ. We want to be sponsoring people through this process. If you're not connected with another person both above and below you, then you're missing out on a lot of what it has to offer. There's a value in both being sponsored and in sponsoring, discipled, being discipled and discipling. So don't miss that. Uh, the more we give faith and recovery away, the more we receive. And we can't do it alone because we recover together. So we see both sponsorship and discipleship as essential to our lives. Okay, that said, if you would like a cross, if there's something that...